somewhere. Siberia is nowhere. You know, you don't go anywhere. You just sit in your room. But you're, you're, you, you lose sense of, of your own self, of who you are and where you are. Here, you know exactly where you are. You come to a place like this, uh, which is tangible, real, concrete. Everything about it is uh, sensory. You know, it engages the senses. From the minute you cross the threshold of that uh, porch out there, the senses are engaged. You know, it's a purely sensory uh, experience. You know, there's no uh, drifting off into no man's land, as you would in, a, on, in, 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 in cyberspace or in Siberia when you're looking at phones and so forth. There's none of that. And the only sensory thing that you have when you're looking at those things is pressing the button. That's all. But here, all the senses are engaged. And that means that it's an authentic human experience. Uh, and that's something that is so at odds with experience, the normal experience of, of, of so many today, most especially the young. Um, and it's what they're craving. You know? The world as a connected, really connected world, connect, connection leading to communion. You know, that's what conversation and being with others is. It's a communion. It comes from the, uh, the Latin communio, which is being bound together, you know, having a, a common sense of home, a common sense of belonging. And of course, that's what this is. This is a home, and it's an experience of homecoming. Uh, it's an experience of coming back to the source, to the root. It's all about being rooted. There's, nothing, there's no roots in Siberia again. You know, you're detached from everything detached from the world, detached from this body, detached from your family, your heritage, your history, all of that. Here, this is a rooted place. You're rooted not only to each other, sitting in the pews, and to your fellow Catholics, you're also rooted to the living, the dead, the unborn, as, as Edmund Burke put it. Uh, you're, you're, you're rooted to the saints. Uh, you're rooted to your sacred source, as we'll see momentarily. Uh, and, and of course, you're rooted to your heritage, your tradition. So it's, it's always important, I think, to look at the, the, the meaning of words that we use so lightly. This word tradition, it comes from the Latin transdare, handing down. You know, things are handed down to us. You know? And of course, as they are handed down, they, 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 they accumulate bits and pieces that weren't there originally, but they, they, and they hang heavy with these things. And I think it's important to be able to distinguish the real from what is added on as we go through uh, life and as, as, as every generation uh, inherits what we give them. But for the most part, what's handed down contains an element of truth, um, a core of truth. And it's usually symbolic. Another thing about being rooted to places is symbols. Symbols are everywhere, you know. And symbols force us to think, to talk, to imagine. The symbol gives rise to thought, as we see. And therefore, when things are handed down to us, they are supposed to open up an experience of uh, you becoming one with this and incorporating it into your life and your experience, your experience, and taking it on, adding to it, giving it more meat, and then passing it on. Um, we are temporary agents in this world, and what we have to give the future, the, the, the future generations is really not ours to begin with. It was given to us, uh, and, and it's rooted to a past. We in the present preserve it and hand it on for the future, but it's still rooted. You can, it can be traced back, always back. Everything in this place can be traced back to the beginning of uh, our uh, of, of that illumination experience in the upper room and on Calvary. Everything, everything here, everything that you like, every, every nook and every cranny. Um, not just for 50 years, I'm talking about the church in general, not just this church, all churches. That, that, that concrete experience of belonging to something greater than ourselves. Again, Edmund Burke called it the great eternal society of the living, the dead, and the unborn. So when we're here, we're not just with each other in the present. We have our, all those who have died here, our own parents, grandparents, ancestors, and so on, all of whom come with us on this journey. And we are mindful of those people. And in fact, we religious people are the only people that are mindful of those people these days. 
actually the dead have been forgotten. Totally eclipsed, uh, as we'll see in, um, in, a few, in a couple of decades' time, because history is an option now in secondary schools. You know, it's, it's, it's frightening to think that people so detached from the past can operate as you know, uh, responsible human beings in the present. Um, no identity, no sense of belonging, no sense of home, no sense of where you came from, and so on. No warnings, moral warnings from the past. All gone, dead. You know, and uh, that's being that's that's you're literally cut cut from your origins. Um, so we'll see how that works out. So that there is there is uh, and, and my own uh, prediction is it's not going to work out too well. My wife teaches in St. Joseph of Cluny, she teaches history, and she's doing her best to raise the profile of the subject, because you have to, uh, when people are given a choice to take it, to take it.